Well, hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Jujitsu 2000 here today. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I'm back, and today I have an interesting video for you. Today I want to talk about Alone the Beast, Season 1, Episode 6. This video will contain spoilers. The name of this episode is Tainted Water. We're gonna go ahead and get started. They are in the Louisiana swamp once again. The kill is a wild boar. We have three new people. We have Sean, 49 year old guy from Texas. We have Donnie a 38 year old guy from Colorado he was also on season 6 I believe of Alone and we have Matt a 46 year old guy from Massachusetts so getting started right off the bat there's an annotation on the screen and it says there are currently about 700,000 wild boar living in Louisiana they were brought as domestic stock in the 1500s by Spanish explorers and then in the 1900s for sport hunting now we're starting the show off here with Sean again the 49 year old man out of Texas he says this is going to be incredibly difficult I got my notes here uh, using nothing but natural materials boars have very thick tough hides and they also have three to four inches of super thick hard fat, which fat is going to be good. And we're talking about Donnie now. He says, we need to get him out of this water, get him to a higher spot. So they decide to pick the boar up and carry it, which is smart. The boars, you know, when they dropped it, it was laying in water. You know, when the flare got up, went off and they showed up on the carcass, it was halfway underwater now we're talking about Matt he says he wants to get it out of the water quickly so that it doesn't bloat and we want to keep other predators away from it we don't want to get any blood in that water which is smart Matt's very smart by saying that there's an annotation that comes on the screen and it says Louisiana has the highest population of alligators at almost 2 million most of them live in coastal marshes and bayous now back to Matt his background he says he's surviving off the land he began when he graduated high school he decided to travel the country for 10 years finding what nature had to provide and researching native plants now Matt's got kind of a different character. He's a little, he's cool, but he's a little weird. <laughs> and I mean that with all the respect in the world. For Matt, if you're watching, much love. You're a weirdo though. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment. And he says he's been living this his whole life. He lost his wife, and in the past couple of years he's been working hard so he can feed his son he's hoping to come out of this with some mental strength that he can be proud of again and now we're talking about Donnie the swamp water is extremely nasty you don't know what's lurking underneath it there's gators there's cotton mouths anything can be sitting in that swamp just waiting for you to put your foot into its mouth you've got to be careful out here there's an annotation that comes on the screen and it says Louisiana is home to poisonous snakes like cottonmouths, coral snakes, copperheads, and rattlesnakes. Donnie says we don't have an axe, we don't have a hatchet, a saw, or anything to that extent. Now for those of you who might not know, Donnie has a background in wilderness self-reliance and primitive skills. He was on Alone Season 6 in the Arctic and got extremely sick while he was in the Arctic. 
he couldn't hold anything inside of his body and as a guy who suffered a heart attack at the age of 37 he says one of the key things is just staying hydrated he didn't last as long as he would have liked but he gained a lot from it he was disappointed in his performance in alone and he's not going to tap out on this one he says he said there's no rocks in the swamp so the next hardest thing that we can find is shells and then there's another annotation that comes on the screen and it says over thousands of years plant decay builds up on the swamp floor this accumulation of soil buries solid materials far below the surface now back to Donnie he says raccoons and other critters munch on these clams and they hide them and they cache them so he's hoping to find a clam shell this for that to be their primary cutting implement out there and then as he's looking around he finds two shells and he starts fracturing them and then there's an annotation on the screen that says the process of fracturing solid materials like flint, obsidian, or even shells to create cutting tools is called napping. The oldest stone tools were created 3.3 million years ago. Now it's 83 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Now we're going to talk about Sean a little bit. He said survival skills started when he was in the Marine Corps. He learned a strong mindset. You just don't quit. You have to have the mental fortitude to push through and make it to the other end. He starts cutting the boar. He says there are very few goals in his life that he hasn't attained. And this is one of those goals for him. To make it to the end of this challenge. I like these, these participants. They're good people so far. They're entertaining. Now we're moving forward talking about Matt again. He's uh, going to go back and get some river cane stalks that he saw on the way in. He's in calf deep water and he says river cane has some silica in it. It's like glass. If they can break it thin enough, they should be able to cut the bore open. Donnie decides he's going to go work on fire. He finds a cypress tree. He peels some bark off from the dry side for tinder. And he's now looking for a spindle and a hearth. And Matt decides to go dig a water seep. So once again, they're digging a seep well. So very, very smart on Matt's part to do that. Sean, he says, Kane is working much better for cutting the organs out. And Donnie made some cordage for his bow drill set. It's been an hour since he began working on the fire. Uh, it's raining now, and now it's two hours later, three hours later, time is just kind of taking off. The rain's really messing him up. He's using a shell to make his set, which is extraordinarily difficult in the wet and rainy conditions. Now he's four hours into this fire already. He doesn't want to lose this meat, so he's really pressing for fire, even though the chips are really stacked against him. Primitive fire is already difficult enough in dry conditions, much less in rain and wet and humidity and stuff like that. I can only imagine what Donnie's going through. I know that it's tough, no doubt about it. And like I said, he's afraid of losing the meat. Then an annotation comes on the screen and it says above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, bacteria such as salmonella doubles every 20 minutes. Um, now he's five hours into this fire. His bow drill keeps breaking, so he decided to switch to the hand drill. I notice on the hand drill set that he's on his second notch. He's getting tired. He's being real with himself. The fact that he's tired, the fact that he's exhausted, the fact that he's losing his muscle memory. So he decides to recruit Matt and Sean to help him with the hand drill. They're gonna do a three person hand drill where basically one guy goes and then he hands it off to the next guy. And then the next guy goes, hands it off to the, and then they just keep rotating back, okay? 
So that's the method that they're using, which I thought was very smart on Donnie's part to be humble enough to swallow his ego and his pride and say, I need help. That's a huge, huge tool, in my opinion, in survival. He's able to, to recognize his weakness at this point. And I'm not saying Donnie's weak. Donnie's a, a rock star when it comes to survival. But to admit that he's having a hard time makes him strong. And they got fire as a result of this, this uh, decision that Donnie made. Donnie says, we can't let that fire go out. And then they all start laughing because they know how hard it is. They know how difficult the conditions are and potentially that those conditions could get worse. So they decide to start smoking the meat and after a while they cook some of the meat and they eat. Now Sean says it's been a rough day, didn't get to build a shelter and temperatures at night are low 40s or lower. Shelter is our next priority. It's 45 degrees at night and Sean is snoring very loud. <laughs> now we're on day two talking about Matt he didn't sleep very much um, he said he needs to take care of his mind and body out there he needs sleep he needs rest which he's right about that Matt's right about that and Donnie says I didn't expect it to get as cold as it did in the swamp and then again another annotation pops up on the screen and it says nighttime temperatures can dip below 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the swamp. It's crazy. Donnie decides he wants to make a teepee type shelter. So he wants a high pitched roof, six foot in the center with enough room for all three of them and even a small fire in the middle if needed. In the annotation again on the screen, it says the teepee's pitched roof is ideal for wet swampy climates because it sheds water, keeping the interior of the shelter dry. Back to Sean here, he says they need several poles and there's not much dead stuff available so they're going to look for live poles. We don't have an axe, we don't have a saw, so we're going to have to put base, uh, fire at the bases of these green uh, trees to burn cut them. So they're going to use fire to cut them down. Very smart on Sean's part. Matt says he feels like when he harvests an animal that he needs to pay homage to the animal. He needs to pay respect to the animal. And to him, he believes that if you eat the eyeballs of the animals, that you can see where they came from. <laughs> Matt's a weirdo, <laughs> but I like him. He's cool, he's kind of strange. <laughs> hey man, whatever you believe in, that's cool. And so he ate the eye, he ate one of the eyes of the animal, and he says the boar had a good free life. And then Donnie kind of gets a little short with them for a second, and Donnie's like, dude, not to be effing around with the pig's head right now, this right this second. He says, I'm all about that, but maybe we can get cracking on this shelter, you know. Donnie's upset a little bit. I would be too because out there you got certain priorities. You got things that you got to get in order if you're going to survive. And in my opinion, and I might be right and I might be dead wrong, but in my opinion, I think Matt is just trying to get some camera time. I think Matt's just trying to get seen and look cool on television. I'm sorry, but that's what I'm thinking. Rain's coming. They need shelter. Day three. Donnie and Sean are putting palm fans on the shelter quickly. Matt has different priorities. He's playing with the frog. A little green frog. He's got his glove on and he's got this little green frog. I mean, it's cool that he's in tune with, with animals and stuff like that. But come on, man. <laughs> There's work to be done, bro. We need firewood, we need water, we need, you know, there's a lot to, that needs done. So I was like, oh my gosh, shaking my head. And then Sean wants to work on the boar's head to get some cutting tools. He wants the teeth, the tusks. And then the annotation comes on the screen. It says boar tusks dating back to 3000 BC have been found in Russia. 
and he says it's very difficult getting the skin off the head and the meat off the head so he decides to put it in the water and let nature do it for him which I thought was very smart crawdads fish they'll pick the meat off of it over several days now we're moving forward to day eight now Donnie asks Matt how you feeling and Matt says he feels <laughs> he says he didn't sleep at all he's stumbling he's sweating he can't think straight he says he's nervous and he doesn't know what to do he says he feels like he's drunk that's crazy thinking about that you know it's could it have been something bad in eating that eyeball or is it something else at this point we don't know Donnie is gonna make a chopping tool from the boar's leg bone, he's gonna make a socket adds and a hand adds. And there's an annotation on the screen that says the adds is a ancient woodworking tool that originated in the Stone Age 2.6 million years ago. And he, Donnie says there's no rocks to use to cut it, so he's using shell to score it at an angle so he can snap break it in the most desirable way possible so he's got just to give you a visual you got a leg bone and there's a ball on each end of it so he's coming pretty close to one end and he's he's scoring a, a an angled line all the way around it so that when he snaps it when he twists it and gets it to break He's got two pieces now, one that's longer, the ball's in his hand and the other ball's in this hand, and a short one here and a long one here. So it's got an angle at the end of each one, and they can use that as a tool. So he, he scores it real good. It must have taken a lot of time to get a piece of shell to score that bone that much, that deep. He had probably, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch deep in, in the scoring line that he did. And then he kind of gives it a nice little twist and it snaps off and it's perfect. So now he has a socket adds and a hand adds. And they look really nice. He says he didn't want to eat the marrow out of the bone because there was a hole. You know, if you take that leg bone again, you got a socket, a ball here and a ball here. And on one end there was a little hole in the ball. And he knows that water could have went in that hole into the marrow which would have contaminated the marrow. So smart, he's very smart. And um, now the night trail cam shows some footage of a raccoon walking around. Now it's day nine, talking about Sean, he decides to go check the skull and he sees some crawdads on it. So he knows that his technique is working. The crawdads are pulling the meat off. Day 10, uh, Matt got sick. He threw up, he needs to lay down for a while. Sean says that he's grasping for his heart. He says that he looks sick. Sean's worried for him. And Sean does the right thing. This guy is a team player. He cares about his teammates. Sean fires the flare, not for himself, but for Matt crazy and now we're talking about Donnie it's day 10 still and Donnie says Matt had some chest pains you don't want to mess around with that he says I've been in that situation I had a heart attack at 37 years old some of the signs and symptoms that he was displaying pain in the chest feeling nauseous those are the same signs and symptoms that I had that's what Donnie says he thinks that better drinking water would be a good thing and he had a log that had kind of a kind of a divot in it um, and he decides to make a trough out of that so what he did was he put clay on each ends so that in the event that the rain comes it'll collect water in this trough very very smart on his part and then he said at that point they can use straws to drink the water once it's full. So they're getting the straws, I think, from the cane. Now day 15, the meat's hard to eat. It's almost like chewing leather. 
they decide to ration the meat. And Sean counts it out and he says, if we have two pieces per person per day, that'll get us five days short of the 30 day challenge. <laughs> Which is cool though, you know, they decide to work on a fish trap um, for crawdads and, and hopefully catfish. And Sean and Donnie lost a combined 15 pounds at this point. And for day 15, that's not bad. I would have expected 15 pounds each by day 15, but no, seven and a half each if you want to count it that way. I know it's hard to count it that way, but Sean makes a bigger trap than Donnie does because he wants his trap to go into deeper water. And Sean says the whole basis for this challenge is to use tools and capture animals and food. Once it's in the water, it can work for you. You can do other tasks. It frees you up. Then there's an annotation on the screen. It says other passive ways of primitive fishing include fish weirs and fish poisoning. Now it's day 16. They're going to try to hunt. They break the jawbone off of the skull of the, uh, to get the upper cutters and the lower cutters. And Donnie used a baton to break the jaw. So a baton meaning a piece of wood, a piece of hardwood, hopefully, to break the jaw in half and he removes the tusks. So now they have tusks, which could be knives. Then they put the skull on the fire and then they took it off and hit it with the baton. I think the skull on the fire might have been maybe to remove the meat or, or to weaken it or something, I'm not sure. And then he hits it with the baton and the broken pieces make arrowheads, dart points, and things like that. And it says an annotation, the earliest bone arrowhead dates back to 61,700 years ago. It was made by early humans in southern Africa. Sean is going to use an ads to work on the hide. Remember that uh, Donnie made the two ads, the long one and the short one? So that's what Sean's going to use to work on the hide. Day 17, they're hungry. Donnie makes an atlatl. Oh man, I thought that was smart when I saw that. There's an annotation on the screen and it says, although the atlatl is originally an Aztec weapon, variants existed throughout the ancient world for 17,000 years. Now we're moving forward. It's day 18 and they decide to take strips of the hide, soak them in water, and they're going to use these strips of the hide to adhere the arrow points to the atlatl shaft. So I thought that was pretty cool. They're going to attach these dart points to the atlatl. And they did. And it looks really nice. They did a good job. Now we're moving forward. It's day 20. They're out of food already. So about five days earlier than what they had predicted, which would have been five days. So they're 10 days short on the food. Actively hunting, Donnie hears a gator and they head back. Now it's nighttime, thunder and rain come. Moving forward, it's day 25. It rained and Donnie goes over to the trough with the clay ends and he's got a little straw and he's drinking water from it. And there's an annotation that comes on the screen now and it says Sean and Donnie have lost a combined 21 pounds. That's still fabulous. It really is for day 25. That's still very good. They're going to check the traps and see if there's anything in there. They check both traps. Nothing in Donnie's, nothing in Sean's. So they're on their way back to camp and Sean sees a possum. Donnie takes off, he runs back to camp, grabs the atlatl, comes back, and, uh, and Sean tells Donnie, you don't have a shot from there. So Donnie kind of repositions his, his place and takes a shot at the possum and he, I think he hits it. And then it looks like Sean kind of spooks the possum to run towards Donnie. And like I said, Donnie takes the shot. He kind of hits it with the atlatl, but I don't think it, it, I don't, it, well, it didn't kill the possum. So then he follows up with a club. He chases this thing. He follows up and he nails it with a club, kills the possum. And Donnie was definitely demonstrating his 
primitive hunting skills there. The atlatl, I think the broadhead of the atlatl hit the animal, but it didn't puncture, I don't think. Maybe the arrow tip broke off, I don't know. And um, Sean tells him, good work, dude. And Donnie says, we're going to eat tonight. And it's the same thing that our ancestors had to go through when they had to live. They had to live hand to mouth. And that's what Sean and Donnie are doing out there. They're using the boar tusk now to process the possum. And they eat. And they're happy. You know, that's day 25. Now we're moving forward. It's extraction day. Day 30. Donnie. He says, today's the day that, I, that I've been looking forward to. I get to go home. I get to get a shower and a good meal. Sean, he says, I'm excited to get out of here. No offense to the swamp, but I'm sick of this place. I'm ready to go home. Back to Donnie, he says, I'm not having any sort of tools, and the only tools that you can create are from the hog or from the land, and you really have to be creative. You have to think. Sean says, he thinks about the primitive people that must have lived there, uh, staying out of the weather, trying to keep warm, the production of food to feed themselves, and he can't help but feel closer to them and have respect for the amount of work that it must have taken for them. Now Donnie says teamwork's very important to any sort of survival situation, and he was fortunate to have Sean. He's a great guy, he's a team player, and they both got along exceptionally well. And I thought that was really cool of Donnie to give a positive shout, you know, to Sean. Thought that was cool. Sean uh, fires the flare. He says, so his time in the military, I saw a few things that I dealt with, plenty of hardships in my life. But this environment's tough. A lot of survival is mental. Even with the creativity or skills, there's always a struggle and you have to have the mental fortitude to push through and make it to the other end. That's what he said on the first day, same thing. And he says, well, I did just that and I think I did it well. And I hope my family sees that if you're willing to do the work, that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And I agree with Sean. Those are some very good thoughts that he shared some very good valuable information there now Don says having a heart attack and having been sick in the bush before my experience on the alone was definitely short-lived <clears throat> this is a hard environment to live in but I prefer to be in this wild place and this was an opportunity to me for me to see if I could achieve it and I did and I feel completely ecstatic and thrilled and I stepped up to the challenge and that's it for the show. This was a very good episode. And my thoughts, my prayers, my respect, and, and, and my positive vibes go out to Matt. I don't know. There wasn't any kind of update on his condition. So I hope Matt's okay. You know, this is a television show, but it is real human beings out there and I really hope that Matt's okay I really do and I want to say thanks to everybody out there that's been on this whole season of Alone the Beast for sharing their stories sharing their skills for our entertainment and if you guys are leaving comments on these videos please before you get real negative or anything like that make sure that you try to have some empathy for these guys you're not the one out there they're the ones that are out there, and, and ultimately we have to trust their judgment for the decisions that they make while they're out there. So with all that being said, folks, again, I want to say thank you for watching this, this video. If you haven't seen the rest of my series on Alone the Beast Season 1, I highly recommend it. Uh, this was a fun series. I don't know why they pulled the show off the air. All the episodes were, were outstanding. Um, I'm really hoping that they return for a season two of Alone the Beast. And man, I'm ready. All they have to do is call me. I'm ready to go. So with that being said, folks, I love you all. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for stopping by. Leave a comment. Please like the videos. I need traction on them. And until next time, have a beautiful day. We'll see you then. Bye for now.